So now we're going to be looking at data transmission issues. And the first thing we're going to speak about is, first of all, what is data transmission? It's simply sending data across a network. This involves sending messages, files across the internet or any kind of network. So we're going to look at security considerations. And the first thing we have here is user authentication. Next, we have firewalls. And lastly, we have encryption. So user authentication, this is typically done using a username and password to see if this person or the person trying to log in has permission to use this device or this network. So most of us, when we go to school, work, college, wherever, we have to log into some type of PC, some type of computer, and we're given a username and or password. Next, we have a firewall. And the purpose of a firewall is to monitor network traffic. So again, the purpose of a firewall is to monitor network traffic. It could be software or hardware, but it monitors network traffic. If it picks up anything that's suspicious, then it's going to either cut that um, traffic off or it's going to ask you, the user, does this look suspicious? Is this something that we should be worried about? Newer firewalls, they actually learn the activity of the user and determines, okay, is this person wanting to send their keystrokes to some person in China? Maybe not. And lastly, we have encryption. The purpose of encryption is to obviously hide the data that's there. So in many cases, the information, if it is intercepted, if, if someone does manage to hack it, they won't see what you've sent. What they will see is just jumbled letters, random characters. Um, yeah, so it just wouldn't make any sense to them. This is where we actually get back to HTTPS as well, because the S meaning secured is encrypted data being sent across that network. Next, we go on to bandwidth and latency. So first of all, what is a bandwidth? I think I've explained this before. Um, it's simply the amount of data that we can push through, send across um, a network, either it be a wire, wireless, whatever it is, the amount of data that we can send across or put through a network at any given time. And it's usually measured in bits per second, megabits, kilobits, gigabits, whatever you want to say, right? Now we have a latency. Latency is simply another word for saying delay. This is simply the time it takes for, a, for data or packets to be sent to their desired location. And this one is usually measured in milliseconds. I can show you a quick example of that here. So if I go CMD and I do, let's say, ping uh, www.google.com. Uh, where is it? Um, oh, uh, where is it? Okay, yeah, here we have a minimum is 20 milliseconds. Maximum is 21 milliseconds, average 20 milliseconds. So this is roughly how long it takes for these packets to get sent to google.com and for it to come back to us and let us know what the time frame has been. So something that's quite important is the implication or the implications of bandwidth and latency. So as we, as I've said before, Bandwidth is the amount of data, the amount of megabits, kilobits, gigabits, terabits, maybe, that can be pushed through a network or sent over a network at any one time. And obviously, it's normally measured in seconds or megabits per second, gigabits per second, right? Latency is the delay. Uh, so the time it takes for me to send a packet or send a message to one device and for it to come back and say, okay, this is how long I've taken to go there and come back. Now, why does this matter? Now, when browsing the internet, we don't really need really, really high speeds. I can go to a website, it takes a couple seconds to load up. It's not really a massive issue. When we have services like online gaming and streaming videos, I think that's a very, very big industry right now. In gaming, when you're playing your game, some of you boys and girls, you're playing Call of Duty, for example, normally you would have your ping, your P-I-N-G, and that is also the delay. So how long it takes for a single packet or a single message to go to um, that server and come back to you. So you know how long it's going to take for something on screen to react based on your movements on your controller or mouse and keyboard. So the lower the ping, the better it is for you. So the lower the latency, the better it is. Because low latency is simply saying low delay. And nobody wants to actually have a lot of delay when they're playing online games. Otherwise, you'll be dead before you're even to able to move properly. Similar to having video calls or streaming video on the internet. Um, bandwidth and latency are again very important. The more bandwidth there is, let me try and demonstrate this again. Let me go to paint and see if I can 
So here we have like a two lane motorway, both going that way, right? But we have 100 cars that we need to go that way and they can only go two cars at a time. So one car here, maybe one car here. And when they get to the very end, another two cars can go. Now that's gonna take roughly 50 cycles. It's gonna be relatively slow. Compared to, let's see if I can draw this, just using my mouse so it's a bit awkward. We have the same 100 cars on this side, right? But this time we have four lanes. Oh, that's only three. Let's draw another one here. We have four lanes going and we can have four cars going at the same time. So it's gonna take a lot shorter amount of time for the four lane highway. So this is four lane, four L versus the two lane highway. All right, so think of bandwidth as the same thing. This is it's just the amount of cars that can go along a motorway at any one time or the amount of data measured normally in bits, so megabits, kilobits, um, gigabits per second that can go through a network at any one time. Why is this important? When we are on YouTube, we look for stuff. I always change my quality when I'm on YouTube on my laptop to 1080p video at 60 frames per second. That's something I'm going to touch on later on as well, but all that means is that my video stream is at full HD resolution and it has 60 frames or so 60 images being shown in one second. Very smooth video, but the downside is it uses a lot of data. So because of that, my bandwidth needs to be able to keep up with whatever YouTube says that video size is, for example. And my latency needs to be very low. Low latency is good. High bandwidth is good. So next we have to look at compression. So compression is simply a process that computers, operating systems, programs do to try and make files smaller. Now having your file smaller has very obvious implications. Having your file smaller means that you have more disk space on your hard drive, your memory stick, means that you can send files quicker over the same network. So if I can send one megabyte across my network and my file is 10 megabytes, for example, it takes roughly 10 seconds. Um, if I compress it down to five, it then takes five seconds. Another advantage is that the person who is receiving that message or that file can download it a lot quicker. If I have to download a 10 megabyte file using a one megabyte download, it's going to take roughly 10 seconds. But again, if, I, if that file is sent to me and it's five megabytes, then it takes roughly five seconds. So compression is simply used to make files smaller. Now we have two types of compression. Let me close this. We have lossy compression and we have lossless compression. So lossy compression, this is where the data is, some of the data is removed permanently. We cannot go back to the original data. Let me repeat that. Lossy compression, L-O-S-S-Y, is where some of the data is removed permanently and we can never go back to the original data. Lossless compression simply says, well, let's rearrange the data so that it's smaller, but we can always go back to the original. If I can quickly demonstrate this on here, um, this is something you will learn mainly in computer science, but let's just say, for example, we have an image and we know on a computer, everything is measured in binary. So let's say we have zero, we have 10 zeros along here, right? If I can get to 10, what's that? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then we have some ones afterward. We don't really care about the ones for now, we care about the zeros, okay? So let's imagine we have 10 zeros or a million zeros in one, in one go because it's binary. Rather than writing out all 10 zeros, I could just say zero as a basic example, zero dash 10. And I've gone from 10 individual digits down to just three. So I've already made my, my file or my code or whatever roughly three times smaller. Now, don't worry too much about this process. All you guys need to know is that lossy, the data cannot be recovered. And lossless, the data can be recovered, the original data. Now, lossy is going to be smaller. It's going to be faster to transfer in most cases. Lossless is going to be slightly larger in most cases. It's, um, but you, because you can go back to the original file or the original data that was stored in that image or that MP3 or that video, you're always going to have better quality. So lossy is good for file size being small. Lossless is good for quality being high. Now, lastly, we have codex, C-O-D-E-C. -E a codec is a program used to compress and decompress files mainly audio and video files. They reduce the space takes that it takes up on your memory stick, your hard drive, so that when you're transferring files across any network, the files are smaller 
and the person on the other end can download them quicker you use you need less bandwidth and you need less data let's say so most of us have like a cap on our mobile data so we have i don't know 10 20 gigabytes per month it won't use as much of that data every time you send an image over whatsapp whatsapp actually compresses it to make it smaller so that you don't use too much of your data when sending that image or voice note or whatsapp um, or video whatever it is that you do send the implications of codecs typically mean that your files are smaller and as i said them being smaller means that you have less quality less quality is linked to less resolution in your video less quality in audio means that you don't hear all the actual recordings that were done in a studio less quality in a video means that you might have less frames per second because having 60 frames per second means that it's higher quality it runs very smoothly 